Hello, this is Kevin Maneri, Senior Solutions Engineer with Phoenix Contact. Today, I'd like to share with you how do you do language changing within Visu Plus Express? So how do you become a multilingual, have a multilingual runtime project? To start, I will just show you uh, this demonstration project, which will be uh, available to you as well. So let's start off that simulation. And in this example, I have a script running which changes this text to say uh, different, to say language in many different languages, uh, or at least the different supported languages. So I'll walk you through that script at some point, or at least the pieces that you need to know to be able to edit it. Um, so that's what this button is saying. It's just scrolling through that in different languages. If I press this language button, uh, you can choose, uh, right now, you can just choose between a flag. Uh, again, you can make this anything you want. You can list out the languages by name. I made it choosing a, a flag. So if I click the German flag, it translates all of my text into German. If I click my uh, French flag, it translates everything into French. And if I go to Russian, now everything is in Russian. And of course, English, everything is back in English. Uh, OK, so uh, how do we how do we get this to work? I'm going to go back into the development environment and share with you. So the first piece is you see there's this language uh, this language button right here. If you double click on it, you get a string table. Now yours is probably empty by default. Um, and there's a few things to mention about the string table. Uh, the first is the interface for this is really not very good. Uh, I highly recommend not using this string table interface to, to do your work, but to actually use Excel and then copy paste into here along with Google Translate. I'll share that with you in a moment. Um, but then the other piece is, well, we do need to get string IDs in here first. So uh, as a matter of fact, we can, let's let's show you the best way to do that. So if you've got your project already developed in, in English or whatever your native language is, you can right click and hit check missing strings. And it's going to go through and check for any strings that you've got in your project that you're trying to display uh, and make sure that they're in your string table. And in my case, they already are. So let's just add one. Um, for fun. New text example. And now let's run that check missing strings again. Let's save it first. Save check missing strings. And it found it and it added it to the string table for us just like that. Um, so then what I would recommend doing, you could copy this and then paste it into Google Translate. Uh, since it's English, it's going to be the same French. Uh, let's let's go ahead and do it and get it populated. Um, so with French, we would get Google Translate and switch the language to French. And now we have that. And then we can switch it to German. OK, you get the picture. Um, so that's great. Um, I'll just leave Russian blank for the sake of time. Uh, let's also say we wanted to add a column to this list. Um, so what I recommend doing, again, I don't like playing with this interface. It often rearranges the order of your strings. It's just not very nice. So I'm going to click at the top here in this gray bar and then shift click down here and hit Control C. Then I'm going to go over into Excel and hit Control V. So uh, this is what we had. Um, and you can see already this new text example. Uh, it moved the, the style of the text around. Um, so this, again, that's why I don't like using the, the, that editor at all. So instead, if you're just using Excel, you've got something like this. Uh, let's say we wanted to add another uh, language. Let's say we wanted to add Spanish. Um, so let's go back over here to Visu Plus. And if we right click, we can add a new language column. And we're going to make it Spanish. OK, and then in Excel. In Excel, this next column, we need to fill with Spanish text for all of this. So I'm going to copy this whole first line here. Paste it into 
Google Translate. And switch to Spanish. And I'm going to copy that, paste it into my Excel column, and copy this whole thing here. And I'm going to delete all of these first because I don't want them there. So let me make sure everything gets deleted. And now I'm going to paste. And now we have Spanish, and Spanish is fully populated. So just like that, now you can sell your product in Spain uh, and much of Latin America. Uh, OK, so uh, that's the string table and the best way to do it. Uh, and that's how, again, if you have a 1,000 tags here, uh, copy them, put them into Excel, copy them into Google Translate, and switch your languages, and paste them in Excel, and then eventually paste them back into your project. That's, that's by far the fastest and cleanest method to make these string tables. Um, OK, beyond that, we also uh, have a special feature here uh, with, this, with this language button, where we have it. I guess I'll, I'll explain the, the basics piece first. So I have that little pop-up window. Um, so I just have this button when you press it. It opens up a modal window, which is a pop-up screen, and it's opening up the thing, the screen called language pop-up. That's this screen, which when you press this button, when you press this button, it changes the language to English. When you press this button, it changes the language to German. These are also just standard command line. Um, so in the command line, if you go to languages, you can select options on this language dropdown. So we could add one for Spanish if we wanted to, um, just for kicks. Let's do that. Uh, I'm just going to make it a basic button so I don't have to go looking for the flag. And we'll make this one Spanish. Why not? Nothing against any anyone who's Spanish or speaks Spanish here. I'm just putting a button on here uh, quickly for the sake of time. We want it to be executing commands. A new command. We're going to switch the language to Spanish. And we're also going to add a command to close the pop-up window. So when they press it, it switches to Spanish and it closes. So I believe that's screen and close and return back. Perfect. OK. Let's get a Spanish. OK. Great. All right. So uh, now we've got that pop-up handled. And the last piece that we I didn't share with you is the script that is changing the, this thing that says language. Instead of displaying language, it'll say Sprache for German and uh, language in many other languages. Uh, and handling that with a basic script, um, you don't need to pay much attention to, to the majority of this. But uh, I guess it's worth mentioning, if you wanted to change the time right now, every five seconds it's cycling through. So you could change that right here. And if you wanted to add languages, just add them to this case statement right here. Um, so we can say, hey, case four could become Spanish. Uh, and we can make uh, we can make it cycle through four different cases then. OK, uh, I will show you this simulation one more time. So we can see now if I press languages, I can also translate into Spanish, and everything got translated into Spanish. Um, this one is being controlled by the script. That's why it uh, varies what it's, what it's saying, which language it's cycling through. And everything still works there. There is one other very important piece uh, that's worth mentioning, and I put Russian on here. Uh, because the language actually only works if you're if you have this Unicode project checked. So if you have uh, something that's a different uh, different type of alphabet, you're going to want to make sure that you have Unicode project checked, which supports a lot more uh, a lot more characters and fonts. So that's at the project level. So if you click on the project name under General, check Unicode project, and then you'll be able to do things like Chinese or Japanese or um, or Russian.